Um, we finally got it written up according to the white paper skeleton that was approved by the TSC a while back. Um, so we'd like for people to go and review the white paper. Uh, we'll probably be asking for approval from the TSC in two weeks. So particularly TSC members, please go ahead and read the white paper if you haven't already and give, give us feedback. Um, the actual paper was located in the email I sent out, but there may be changes. There's some, you know, always minor changes. And uh, if you want the most up-to-date version, you can go to the GitHub, as I said in the email. Um, so that's the one and a half minute summary. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, I've just got one question, Hart, and that is how would you prefer to have people raise issues or offer suggested edits and so forth? Do you want GitHub issues or how do, how do you want that? Um, so I think it depends on the issue. If it's a general issue, email is probably better. Okay. Um, if it's a direct thing that you can edit in, you know, feel free to make a pull request. Okay, great. Super. Any questions for Hart? There's the mute button. Um, Hart, I, get, I got from your email that if it's probably grammatical, tense, something like that, you guys are going to put that through a, a tech writer anyway. So yeah, for feedback somewhere between. Um, yeah, if, mostly content edits. I mean, you're welcome to edit grammar and voice and things like that if you want. But we're going to, you know, the people that uh, did the, the, the technical writers that did the architecture consensus paper, we were really, uh, you know, they did a lot of cool formatting and um, and we think they did a good job. So so we'll let them handle, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so we don't, we, we don't want to get bent out of shape from that yet, but if you feel like, you know, if something's really bugging you, you know, feel free to issue a pull request. Okay, great. So that's kind of on the, the low end, probably don't need feedback on that kind of stuff. And then on the high end, what we had done in the past with this working group is we kind of kept changing directions right. on, so, on the working group. And we don't want to, yeah. we don't want to go yank, yank the working group around again. This is the structure of the paper. We're not opening the door to completely restructuring this effort. Right. We, I mean, we don't want to, we got TSC approval for the skeleton and we don't want to change that. But what we want people to do is like, you know, their, their project uh, outlines, right? You know, and if you're not happy with your project outline or something like that, we want you to, ha you to have the opportunity to go through and edit, you know, provide corrections, things like that. Great. Cool. So, yeah. Any other thoughts for Hart? If not, please do uh, come prepared in a couple of weeks to uh, to vote on that. It'd be great to get that out. <clears throat> okay, yeah, thanks. Good. All right. So first up is Composer. Who is on to regale us on Composer? Hi, I am I'm Caroline. Great. So Carol, uh, Min, can you post the link? In the uh, in the chat. Sure. Great. So go ahead, Caroline. Okay. So I think overall, um, high pleasure composer is doing really well. Um, so in the last um, quarter, we've seen a lot more people um, on Rocket Chat asking questions. We've had a lot more questions on Stack Overflow. Um, we have. Um, made lots of commits. Um, I think one of our issues is that we don't have enough contributors from outside of IBM, um, but this is something that we want to work on. And we've got um, a few plans on how to improve our number of contributors. So the first is to create more YouTube videos and write more blog posts about Composer. But also the other thing, is that we want to offer potential contributors mentors so that if they're thinking about um, contributing to Composer, they can um, have one of us help them through it and help them 
choose things to um, work on and how to get going with it um, and things like that. Um, so our current plans are that at the end of November, we're going to cut a 0 0.16 release. Um, and after that, we'll look towards dropping support for Fabric 1.0 and supporting Fabric version 1.1. And we also plan to introduce the concept of links, but also other functionality that's been requested by the community um, with an outlook to deliver a 1.0 release of Composer in the future. So I think that's, yeah, that's a summary of, the, of what I wrote in the um, project update. Has anyone got any questions? Any questions for Caroline? I'm finding it hard to believe there are none. Me too. All right, I'll, I'll fill the, the gap here. Um, you say you, you would like to introduce the concept of links. Do you want to give us a little teaser of what that is? Okay, um, so at the moment, um, when you want to um, use assets and participants, they have to be in the business network that you're currently using, but we want to be able to link to other business networks. And that's kind of the, yeah, that's kind of the high level view of what links is. <clears throat> okay, so kind of a, an identity bridge or something like that. Yeah. Great. Thank you. So Any Caroline, questions? if there are others that don't have um, any any comments, I'll, I'll, I'll start by saying one of the ways that you can try to grow your community of contributors is to help them navigate through the issues, right? You've got uh, 294 open issues presently um, and um, and they're they're nicely tagged but the the one tag that I think we found helpful in fabric and others have done in other communities is to um, to tag something as you know here's a good starter issue to work on or here's a low-hanging fruit or help wanted something along those lines to indicate where you're willing to accept help from somebody new um, and, you know, to identify either a very simple bug that they could fix or, um, you know, a small improvement, um, but something that isn't going to be um, too onerous to somebody who's unfamiliar with the code base, but yet by the same token, they can start contributing and, and, and learning their way around the code base. Um, and so I think, you know, going through and we've done this in Fabric a couple of times, not as much as I might have liked, um, but, but you know, to actually identify here's where we'd love to have some help, right? Yeah, that's a really good idea, and um, yeah, especially to have like a good first book tag. Um, I think that would yeah really help people to be able to get started. So I do know that you've had uh, a release about what about every two weeks? Is that the cadence that you guys are on? Um, we try to release every week. Um, every week, okay. Yeah, sometimes, occasionally, we don't quite manage that, but most weeks we do release um, each week. Okay, and then that release basically is your updating NPM. Yes. Okay. Yep. Uh, Carolyn, this is this is Leonard. I just want to know whether there's any dependency between your releases and Fabric, because Composer uh, is definitely playground uh, component to design business networks, which will run on the Fabric uh, platform. So, if there are any releases promised or sort of in the pipeline for Fabric, I would expect there to be some dependency on when your your major releases will happen. Is that a correct view of things? 
Um, yes, well, we don't, our, we release every week, so any kind of features or bug fixes we put in every week. And then when Fabric, I guess, release a new feature or change how something works, then we try to, as quickly as possible, be able to support that. Sounds good to me, thank you. Any other questions, comments on the uh, Composer report? Okay, thanks, Caroline. Uh, next up is uh, Indy, and I think, uh, Nate, you said somebody else was going to present. Who is that? Yeah, I believe we have Sean Bohan on the call to present oh, the uh, Indy project report. And Sean Bohan was mi uh, muted when he said, I'm going to do that, Christopher. So thank you. Um, yay, the tyranny of the mute button. So we posted yeah. our um, project update to the wiki. Um, apologies for not getting that in there in advance of the TSC so it can be reviewed. Uh, from a project health standpoint, we have, we're have we six months into incubation. We've done, we're, we're getting through the entire list of all the things we need to do from a, an onboarding into Hyperledger as well as um, the, uh, you know, things like Jira, Jenkins, GitHub, Rocket Chat, just, just getting the community moving. We've also posted recently a draft community roadmap of what we're going to be working on over the next, through the end of 2017, and then like at a high level, what's going to happen in Q1, Q2, and Q3 uh, next year of not what's going to happen, but what we think our priorities are. Um, from an issues perspective, I think to, to parallel what Carolyn said about um, Composer, like we're really concerned and focused on not just building on indie and indie SDK, but we also want to grow our community of developers and really work hard in the, in the next couple of months on onboarding and documentation, uh, making sure when somebody who wants to contribute shows up and says, how do I get involved? They've, they've got a clear, at least starting point. There's a, a trailhead that they can look at and say, okay, here's how I can, I can do something, whether it's learning or education or actually you know, getting their hands dirty in the code. Um, from a release standpoint, um, We've had four major releases and one hotfix, and also as of today, um, we're preparing our next release candidate, uh, and it's going to include state proofs, so we can read requests from a single node. Um, Nathan can probably answer any questions about that as, as we move on. Um, we listed out our activity of the quarter. I'm not going to give you a dramatic reading of this, but um, from a current planning perspective, again, really focusing on onboarding and documentation, um, growing this community that we've had, we're now starting to see interest from a couple of external developers for uh, they want to contribute code for specific things that either they need or the indie community needs. And we're really psyched to see them. We can't announce it yet, but um, they've been pretty active on Rocket Chat. Um, we're still working on incubation tasks that I mentioned, as well as looking at things like node performance and observer nodes and, and, and et cetera. That's something, something that we're going to be working on over the next few months. Um, and maintainer diversity. So uh, we're really psyched. We have nine maintainers right now for Indy. Um, three different companies are doing it. We're looking at a couple of independent external maintainers in, in that group. So that's a, a really high level review of the status. The document I think is linked in, uh, well, it's definitely, it's on the wiki. I think someone just added that link to, um, thank you, Dan, added that link to the, the chat. So if there are any questions, I'd be happy to, or, or, or pass them on to Nathan. I can't handle it. Like Any some questions? more detail on state proofs. <clears throat> so I can jump in with that. Essentially, state proofs is the idea that all the transactions end up signed by the a quorum of nodes, so that when you do a read request to a single node in the response, you get a state proof to show that that um, the the result that you get out of the read request was signed by a quorum of nodes. So that instead of asking f plus one nodes for the uh, the, the read query, you can ask a single node, and then if you can validate the state proof, you can continue on. Um, if the response does not have a valid state proof, you can still ask F plus node one nodes to make sure that the pool has reached consensus about the answer that you received. Great. It has some applicability in the <clears throat> performance scale working group transaction definition, I'm sure. We certainly hope so. Um, there's still some more functionality we need to add to the system 
to really take full advantage of it in terms of scaling horizontally. Um, but it should help read performance um, the way it stands today for this coming release. And then as soon as we can add observer node support, it means that we can add more um, nodes to the pool to increase the read throughput without having to affect the, the, the BFT algorithm's write throughput. Thank you. Any other <clears throat> comments, questions, concerns for Sean or Nate? Um, just a, another question, because that seems like a pretty interesting feature, the, um, the state proofs. Is that tied in a, in a direct way to a specific consensus implementation? Um, and can it be generalized outside of PBFT style implementations that would have a you know strict F F plus one kind of definition? Um, I think it could be generalized. Um, certainly, the the crypto primitives we've been putting them into the new Indie Crypto library. So we actually did a bunch of work to separate out all the um, kind of the crypto protocol level issues into its own library, so that those could be reused. Um, and then in terms of the way the state proofs themselves work, that code is very similar in some ways to the code out of the Ethereum code base. Um, so there are some uh, parallels there and some pieces that some of the other projects may have already looked at. So I don't think it'll look terribly foreign, um, but certainly that could be a topic of discussion probably at the, the Lisbon Hackfest if anyone is interested. We will have Jason Law and Lavesh Harchandani um, both there who are very, very steeped and deep in that code that could answer questions about that. Great, thanks. Anything else <clears throat> for Indy? Great, okay. Thanks, Sean, thanks, Nate. Um, uh, what do we got next? I think next up was Cicero, if I'm not mistaken. Hey Chris, Dan here. Hey Dan. I'm so, impressed you run a flight ship 23 minutes in and you've already got through the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was actually kind of expecting or maybe even hoping for a little bit more conversation on the project reports, but um, well, we are where we are. So uh, next up would be Project Cicero. So I think um, just to sort of remind everybody where we were, um, you know, um, uh, Human had given us a um, an initial uh, review of the proposal, uh, I guess about a month ago, and then Dan came back a couple of weeks ago and uh, addressed some of the initial set of concerns that um, people had. Um, the white paper, you know, the spec was was published. Additional information about the project was made available. The project itself, the code was made available. Um, and I think that where we were a couple of weeks ago was that members of the TSC were interested in, um, uh, I guess, the you know, they're interested in sort of reviewing the information that was published just before the last call uh, that we had um, two weeks ago. And uh, so hopefully people have had an opportunity to review this and, and to think about it. And so I guess we're at a point where um, I think it's worthwhile sort of giving everybody an opportunity to, um, uh, you know, to add some of their thoughts at this point. And we'll figure out if we've got consensus and, and take a vote if that seems appropriate. Thanks, Chris. Um, just uh, just sort of update people on what we what we've done since the last call. Uh, so we've been kind of pounding the pavement and talking to a lot of firms and explaining what Cicero is, um, and we've been pretty successful. Um, you'll see the list of sponsors at the top of the proposal has grown significantly, and includes you know quite a diverse set of companies. You know from HSBC on the legal side to uh, several leading law firms, um, IoT vendors. Uh, we had a great discussion with the sovereign guys um, about identity. 
And we also uh, made really good progress on getting named contributors, which are listed down on page four. So also, you know, a pretty diverse set of people. So we're going to start putting up the speed on the code. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to their contributions. And uh, yeah, happy happy to take your questions. Um, and and you know, hear what you have to say. So this is Otto. Hi, Dan. Um, I appreciate the effort you put into updating the the proposal and sharing the specification that you have. Um, I, you know, to me. It seems quite promising and interesting for sure, but I wonder if it's not too early. And to be honest, I don't think it's particular to your project. This is a question I actually would like to raise to the TSC in general is, you know, of course, this we have an incubation phase to allow people to create new work, new work and then see if it, you know, gets any, any momentum. But I wonder, you know, for me, when I looked at this proposal, it seems quite promising, but really early on. No offense to you, Dan, but you know, when I look at the repo, you're the only contributor, you are the one who has authored the spec. It all seems to be a one-man show. And you know, I'm happy to see that you're getting momentum and you're getting support from a whole bunch of other people, but I think you would have to admit that it's still very early on. And so for me, it raises the question from a TSC point of view, is there a limit to, you know, or where, where do we set the bar as to when is it too early for project to be accepted in incubation? Which, you know, maybe you'll get there in like just a matter of three months or so if you really gain that kind of momentum and it continues and so much the better. But, you know, I at the same time, I think we have to be careful not to, as a project, to dilute too much, you know, or, or spread ourselves too thin, I should say, because we are adopting all these project in incubation to a point where we get lost in you know a whole ton of things um, it seems like this is a new space so it's interesting but I imagine I'm actually aware that there are other people working on this kind of levels of you know higher level with the link to the legal aspect of smart contracts and you know I don't know if people knew we are going to start working in that space. Maybe there's a whole bunch of other people who would want to join and propose the project. I uh, I don't know. But so the fact that it seems to be quite immature makes me wonder whether it's not a bit too soon for us to jump into this. But I would like mm -hmm. to hear from other TSC members. Maybe they don't feel the same way or maybe they think this is what incubation is just about. I have to admit, I'm not completely sure myself. Well, I know. I think that, that that's a valid point. But I, you know, to play devil's advocate, the other model is, you know, we go away for six months and kind of work on this on our own or in a small group, and then we arrive with, you know, two hundred thousand lines of code. Uh, and I think we've, we, you know, I think we've seen in other. In other in other groups that that can also cause problems, right? Particularly when it comes to forming the the community around the project. Um, so I, you know, personally, I believe that this that you know it is early, yes, but um, you know we're already starting to see a diverse group of people clustering around the project, and then the incubation phase seems to be the right time to do that. This What's is Dan, and I share a lot of the the same views that that Arno expressed. It it is certainly a, a gray area for um, for how we accept projects into incubation. Things don't need to be certainly production mature, but I think on the other end of the spectrum, what I'd like to see is if the goal of a project is to implement a standard, then then I think the standard should be far enough along that there's some reasonable ability to to say what that looks like and then maybe to a lesser extent with code having <clears throat> having at least uh something of substance so that things aren't so early that that the shape of the thing that's trying to be built isn't apparent so i think I'll probably leave it at that but but what i would like to see is 
for a proposal like this to maybe um, come back after after things have solidified a little bit more. So, and um, uh, this is Mick. I'll say um, pretty much the same thing that I know and, and Dan just said, which is this looks like a really fantastic idea, like something that we need. Um, but you know, in my my original comments on the on the proposal were kind of of the form. This looks great, but I'm not quite sure what I'm getting yet, and it it still feels like there's an exploration as to what the um, what the details are of of what we would be providing in the proposal um, or in the project, um, and and that that doesn't mean we don't move it into incubation, but but it's a very different beast than some of the other things that we've brought in where we had. Um, at least a fairly concrete idea of what the artifacts were that would be generated out of it, and we could talk about specifications. Um, and it just, it, I mean, it just feels very early. Yeah, so in, in the chat, there's been, uh, Hart and, and others have brought up conversations we were having in Singapore um, at the member summit not in relation to Cicero, actually, but um, uh, actually sort of triggered by um, uh, the potential to bring some other things in, but, um, you know, concerns about, you know, do we have a, you know, a solid community behind them and so forth. This was actually, it was triggered by discussion around uh, potential incubation of the Project Ubin um, which is the Monetary Authority of Singapore project um, uh, application, uh, you know, sample applications, if you will, that were built for Fabric and Quorum and, um, and Corda. Um, and, you know, again, this is one of those things that, um, you know, I think that we as a TSC maybe need to have a meta discussion around you know, what is this sort of thing that isn't quite a project, it isn't quite ready for incubation, but they want the framework of the intellectual property and the chat and all the other things that come with being, a you know, participating in this community. Um, uh, and, uh, but where, you know, from a, um, a project maturity perspective, it's not quite to the level that, you know, Mick and others were discussing. Um, so, uh, and, and uh, I don't think we ever had, you know, an outcome and I, I would just sort of highlight, you know, my experience from a couple of other, um, uh, a couple of other projects, uh, OpenStack, for instance, had StackForge, right? StackForge was, um, again, not branded OpenStack, but clearly it was for people to be able to post, you know, utilities and, uh, libraries and, uh, you know, configurations and so forth, um, you know, just a, a melange of stuff that was relevant to OpenStack, but that didn't have the formal blessing of the, um, uh, of the, the foundation, the OpenStack foundation, and, and wasn't under the, the governance model of the foundation. It was just sort of adjacent, right? Um, and everybody sort of knew it was adjacent, but again, the branding was clear um, that this wasn't OpenStack, if you will. Now, <clears throat> in Cloud Foundry, um, there was actually something called the Cloud Foundry Dash Community Organization, um, and it, it served a similar purpose of hosting, you know, uh, library fragments and sample applications and you know, glue code and configurations and so forth. Um, and, uh, but it was very confusing, you know, um, because the brand was uh, essentially synonymous, right? But uh, it was hard for some people to distinguish that the fact that Cloud Foundry Dash community was really just, you know, a free for all. There was no guarantee anybody was maintaining it. There was no guarantee it had anything to do with the current version. It was not curated at all. Um, and, and so it became somewhat confusing to have something that shared the brand, so to speak, um, with, uh, Cloud Foundry, but that really had nothing to do with Cloud Foundry at all. Um, somebody just created that, that org. They were actually in the community, but again, they didn't do it with the sort of the humana humana of the, 
uh, of the Cloud Foundry Foundation itself. Um, you know, other projects, um, you know, do find ways of, um, uh, you know, dealing with this. There's no, there's no right or wrong recipe. So, I mean, but I, I do think that, you know, it would be, you know, valuable if we, as the TSC, could come up with an approach that we felt would, if you will, um, enable people to to bring things into focus, but that didn't necessarily carry with it the full weight of, um, uh, you know, of the foundation, you know, of the Hyperledger organization itself, um, and where it was crystal clear that, look, you know, this is as is, you know, <laughs> you're on your own, it may not even be supported. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, yeah. therefore, you know, people, you know, caveat emptor, you, you knew what you were getting into and, and the, the community doesn't necessarily suffer if there's something bad in there, right? Um, but it, again, it becomes unfortunate if somebody posts something in, if we had a hyperledger dash something and somebody put something in there that did something bad, well, then we get all the bad press, right? And, and and so maybe to be a little bit controversial, Chris, I think, you know, I, I, I'm also a maintainer on Composer and I went yeah. through that process of, uh, of getting Composer approved. And a lot of the other top level projects are from, you know, big vendors, right? Um, and most of the code that was in those projects was developed, you know, at proposal time by a single vendor. Um, so I think we have to be careful that the TSC doesn't send this message that actually what what you want is that the, for vendors to go away, write 200,000 200, lines of code on their own, and then arrive with the code and you know contribute it. Um, because I don't think that's going to work for you know particularly this smart legal contract space where we need to reach out to a very diverse community of lawyers and technologists. Um, and, and really, truly incubate the idea, right? It, it, it's an incubation process that we're looking for. So if I could make just one more comment about this, that um, uh, historically, the projects that have been brought in are ones that some company has created internally as a result of, of seeing some need. Um, one of the things that would be interesting to move towards is, you, you know, what, what projects do we have that are uniquely hyperledger? That initiated out of the community, not out of the, out of some company that was migrated in, and it feels like these sort of pre-incubation or kind of early projects give us an opportunity, um, prior to an idea being set in stone, give us an opportunity as a community to formulate what the idea should be. So uh, again, I mean, independent of this particular project and its and its role in this. This idea of bringing projects in that are still in the formulation stages feels like something that would be really good for our community. And as I said, I think that that goes in hand hand in hand with building a diverse set of contributors. Because if you're a single vendor and you arrive with a huge code base, as you know, as I've as I you know personally experienced. It's then very hard to go and find contributors to contribute to that code base. It's kind of an uphill struggle at that point. I think you're right. That's a fair point. At the same time, you sit still time two hundred thousand code lines of code. Maybe there's an in between. That would be the sweet spot, right? Yeah, I'm I'm less concerned about code maturity and more about the definition of what it is that the project's going to solve. And I think in this case with it being, it feels like two things are in motion. One is what's the definition of the specification or standard, and then the other would be the, the actual implementation. Right. I think that's fair. I mean, they're, they're in incubation, I would say. Yeah. So, um, Dan, uh, I think there's kind of a, a fundamental question here. So, is is Accord, or sorry, is Cicero trying to be a strict implementation of the Accord protocol, or is it more general? Is it trying to be more general in sort of the, you know, hyperledger uh, 
legal smart contract project, right? So what would happen kind of if the Accord standard disappeared overnight? Would the project abandon or would it try to find, you know, a new spec or implement a spec or something like that? Because I, I think this kind of... Uh, I, I think it would be the latter. I mean, the, the Accord project is a, a legal working group, essentially, right? It's the source of requirements, if you will. It, that's, you know, the, 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 its primary function is uh, a bunch of lawyers sitting around talking about different types of contracts and the semantics of execution of those types of contracts. So if we, you know, if we lost the relationship to the Accord project, then we would still have the code, obviously, but we would have lost that um, kind of uh, customer contact. Um, and that, that's really valuable for this problem, I think. You know, a supply chain contract is quite different to a digital media rights contract. Um, and, you know, in ways that technologists don't, don't understand. But so how old is this uh, Accord project? Sorry, Anna, can you repeat? How old is this Accord project? I mean, this, I looked at the spec, there's quite little there, right? We're talking to it about the Accord protocol as if it's this big thing that's out there, but is there more than the Google Doc that you shared with us? No, I mean, it, it's, it's so the, 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 the group of lawyers have been, uh, it, you know, has been formed over the last six months or so, you know, who, who man can give you the, yeah, um, okay, but so that's what I thought. Thanks. And, the, the, you know, as I said, this is kind of an exciting, innovative space that where we really need innovation and incubation. Um, so, in my mind, part of the, the role of this incubation project within Hyperledger is to help form that community and get people to congregate around you know, a, a, a single code base versus, you know, fragmenting off into their own private worlds and some stuff happening in, you know, Enterprise Ethereum Alliance uh, and, and various other places. So I, I think the, the, this is very much the question I raised initially, because honestly, I don't know the answer. You have that expectation. It's not exactly what has happened to date. Maybe that's what incubation should be, but it's definitely not what it has been. And so I think this is what we're trying to figure out. That's why I raised it to the question to the TSC. Um, what we have used incubation for was to transition projects into Hyperledger, mostly from proprietary development and into you know the Hyperledger umbrella and providing a transition period. Uh, I agree with you, it does, you know, nobody has said that it cannot be used for such an early project, but that's, it seems like, you know, other people have spoken mm. kind of in line with my expectation that there is maybe too early there, I don't know. So, Chris, I mean, what's your opinion? Well, so, you know, again, I'm, I'm, I, I definitely agree that we need to provide some ability for a, a true sort of a community ecosystem to grow up around what we're doing here at Hyperledger. And some of that, you know, whether it's new ideas, somebody wants to try out some new ZK, you know, algorithm or whatever. Um, and, you know, again, is looking for uh, a place, you know, to uh, to do that, to you know, share their ideas um, and discuss them, and have the the confidence of the the IP coverage and so forth with the you know the licensing and so forth. That's all good, but the, you know, again, is that a top level? Is that the thing that gets marketed out on the the website and so forth? Um, you know. Uh, and you know, I'm not. I'm not so sure. Again, as I mentioned in Cloud Foundry, we did have a problem because there were sometimes you know code that was in that community 
repo uh, organization rather that was just either incompatible or broken, unmaintained, and um, and it um, you know it, it it created certain amount of problems for the community to sort that out, and make sure that people were crystal clear about what it was. Um, I think, um, you know, again, in, in this case, it's a little bit earlier than a lot of the code bases. I'm not saying that that's, you know, I think I agree with Arno. I'm not sure that we are all, you know, necessarily on the same page. Um, you know, if, um, uh, you know, I guess we could use the project reporting from an incubation perspective to make sure that it's starting to sort of pick up and others are joining in and um, and it's moving along. And if it's not, um, I guess then we have to put it in, pardon me, in the attic or something. I think, you know, the, the question really becomes, well, what do we do with things that, pardon me, um, that fail to gain any traction? I guess that's really, and 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 have, you know, a sustainable uh, community behind them. That's, I think, the real, uh, the real question. Um, and, you know, so I think it was actually Dave who proposed in Singapore this notion of Hyperledger Labs, where you could put stuff um, and start working collaboratively on stuff, but it was clearly not a formal Hyperledger project, um, whether incubation or active. Um, but it was a place where the community could experiment with new thoughts and ideas without necessarily having, you know, everybody that, you know, reads Coindesk or, you know, whatever, you know, jumping all over it. Maybe it was Marta. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry if I misattributed that. Um. Yeah, it was Marta, Chris. So, what what so, do others think? So help me out here. Um, you know, we we can't turn into IBM, right? Um, so what we can do is we can write more code, and we can get more contributors to the code base. So you know, what is it that that would you know what what's the bar that we need to to reach? I guess. I think you're uh, um, you know grasping. Uh, a, a point that probably shouldn't be grasped because Arno's uh, initial uh, thought was that the spec itself is too uh, unclear or immature, so it has nothing to do with the size of uh, you know the offering. It has to do with uh, whether there is any ground to stand on. I think that that's that seems to be a primary concern, um, and then you so it's know about that, the that project. What's that? So you so it's about the the definition of the scope of the project. That's the issue. Uh, not only the scope, but if you're building on a um, standard without a standard, I don't know how you know how you can say that you're building on anything because uh and i don't think it has anything to do with size or any any of the other stuff that much uh it is very exciting uh thing that everybody agrees with that that to create a way to uh link and to transform natural language into smart contracts is you know it's almost like something that a lot of people have been trying to do uh and it is not a trivial undertaking and i suggest that if it is a uh, really a legal working group then it should be constituted as such not uh under a you know specific uh, housed in in a separate uh thing like a, a court although it is um, supposed to be working closely with Hyperledger. Well, it shouldn't be just it shouldn't be just lawyers either. Yeah, so but uh, it be open. Vipin, we we incubated Quilt. <laughs> Quilt is being you know specked at 
the W3C and the community group and uh, and the, the reference implementation is hosted by the JS Foundation, um, which is a sister of Hyperledger, obviously, sibling uh, org, but uh, nonetheless, we have the same sort of fragmentation. I think, you know- No, no, Quilt had a very, very um, definite, uh, there was actually a standard, there was a white paper, there were implementation, I mean, it's not, it's not similar at all in my mind. Well, it's uh, further along, yes, and it has uh, slightly more uh, backing. And I think, Dan, you know, to this point, yes, I, I know that Clause I.O. isn't going to become IBM in, in the next week or so. But I, I do think, and, you know, to Nick's point a little bit earlier, you know, despite the fact that these were initially sort of internal, uh, you know, developments of uh, some of the larger organizations, the I think the important distinction is that there's um, uh, that there's a, uh, a sustained investment, right? Um, and and that's I think going to be the key thing. You know, when you know we ask, you know, in the in in the form for uh, a proposal, you know, one of the things is, well, who's going to be, uh, you know, what is the sustainability of this by by sort of identifying how many developers and how many you know who's going to be maintaining it and so forth. Um, and I. You know, I, I do think that's an important criteria. I, I'm not saying that everything has to come from some big corporation. That's not at all. It's, it's really more importantly is, is this going to have some legs, right? Um, and again, I don't think there's anybody on this call that thinks this is uh, a bad idea or, you know, could potentially be, you know, game changing. I don't think that anybody disagrees with that. I think the question really then becomes though, but there are, I think it's, I can't remember who was pointed out, there's a number of these things um, being done out there. Um, you probably have run out of fingers and toes by the time you, you, you sort of um, inventory them all. Um, and then the question becomes, does this thing have um, the ability to sort of turn into one of those, you know? So um, again, I, I, I'm, I'm not, I, I think, I think, you know, I'm sort of on the fence here, I think, it would be nice if we could sort of get a sense of more people interested in seeing this become a reality and therefore contributing to helping to make it real um, uh, would would help me over the the, the, the fence, so to speak. Do we, do we almost need like well, I'm with, I'm with We're short on time. I wonder if we should uh, uh, get to the vote, Chris. We, we could do that. Um, and Sure, we, we, we could do that, Dan. So, Min, do you want to do a roll, please? And then we'll see where we are. Sorry, are we going to vote on the proposal, right? Yes. Um, so how do we do this? Sorry, I'm, <laughs> I don't know how this is. Um, so, so the vote is on the Cicero proposal, and I'm pretty sure everybody's had an opportunity to read it. We've been reviewed it. We've reviewed it uh, to uh, at least twice before. Um, uh, so I would just put the question and just do a roll call and ask for yes or no. Okay. Um, so. Guys, but do we need a vote? Like, do you think we need a vote, or do you want to postpone it? Dan, it's up to you. Maybe no. Well, Dan sort of called the question. I think we should vote and figure out where we are. And if it's, you know, my, my suggestion would be that if we come back and if the answer is no, then we should work to try and figure out. So what is the place for something that's, that, you know, that, that wants to come here, but that isn't necessarily a fully fledged incubated project would be my, my take on the next steps okay. if we don't get there. If we get there, then obviously then sure, sure. I do think that we need to finish this conversation about how we deal with sort of organic growth in the community. So, man, if you wouldn't mind, just sort of go through the um, the, the list of TSC members and ask for a yes or no. Okay, so we have Arnold, yes or no? No, okay. no, sorry. We have Bao Hua. Bao Hua, yes or no? You're on mute. Uh, yeah, you I am no. In, in, in the chat. So he said no? Okay. And then? 
about the idea as many as here but for incubator i would say no uh, however uh, i like to go forward with something the incubator or a working group um, that the community would be able to participate and be able to grow this project okay so it's a no yes and chris yeah, so I think I'm a no, but I do want to figure out how we um, how we do, you know, sort of enable this sort of pre incubation phase, because I do think there's merit in the thought. Okay, Dan. No. Greg. I'm going to simply note it as abstain uh, just because I'm not against it. I just think we need more time. Okay. I'm going to follow Greg's lead and abstain. abstain. We need more time. Okay. Jonathan? Uh, abstain as well. Not at this point, but yeah. Okay. Let's revisit then. Kelly? Uh, not at this time, no. Okay. Nick? Um, I think I'll. I second Chris's. Um, I'm a no for incubation, but I want to see a way to make this project part of Hyperledger uh, if we can find a way to do a pre incubation because there's tremendous value in it. Okay. Um, did I miss anybody? Uh, this is Nathan. Oh, yeah, Nathan. Sorry. Um, I think my natural inclination would be to vote yes, um, though it's clear that there are some misgivings um, that, as Vipin points out, we just haven't gotten to a consensus level yet about. Um, and given the lack of a, a tier for um, some sort of pre-incubation status, um, I think uh, it's dangerous for us to start to put a lot of barriers to starting um, a project in incubation. Um, unless we can articulate kind of the specifics of the misgivings that we have. So I, I think that we owe um, the project proposal and the team here um, some more clear feedback as to what the, what, what the barriers are or what the, what the maturity criteria might be so that we don't keep them in limbo. That's a no. Yeah, I think those are good thoughts. Okay. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight no's and three abstains. Okay. So here's what I'm going to propose. We're we're at end of job one, yeah. uh, for, to, for today. One, yeah. Um, yeah. But I'm going to suggest, you know, um, that we we take up um, a process for exploring. Uh, as, a, as a formal function of the TSC right now, what do we do for uh, projects of this class? And then to address Nate's concern, to crisp up sort of what we think are the um, uh, acceptance criteria for a formal incubation. Uh, I think I think Nathan, you you've you've hit on something that I, I think could be cleared up. Um, I think some of us had in mind that we probably all have different pictures in our heads about what that what that is. So I would suggest that we do a little bit of both. Um, and so I'm going to start a thread on the mailing list right now um, that I would suggest we start working on. How do we uh, enable and embrace the type of sort of early pre-incubation phase for people to explore new ideas um, to see if they can build uh, a community around an idea uh, and bring it to the point where it does meet the the criteria. Um, because again, uh, Human, if you're on, and, and Dan, this is not, do we think this is, I mean, I think everybody's pretty much expressed that this is an interesting and important idea. Um, it would be great if we could do this, but I think the concern is that there isn't enough um, uh, you know, enough along yet for people to start making commitments to make sure that this thing does succeed. So um, let's try and figure out how we can help that process. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. 
Yes. Okay. Thanks, everyone. And uh, for those of you in the U.S. celebrating, uh, happy Thanksgiving. And we'll see you all on the 30th. Uh, sorry, do you mind a quick question? Andre, go ahead. Ah, thanks. So, yeah, I just uh, wanted to ask a question about Hackfest, but uh, I, I seem to have missed uh, the time in the beginning. So, uh, we at uh, Iroha would also like to join the Hackfest, and so uh, we are interested uh, in uh, uh, what is the, uh, like, what should be the topics? Are they uh, practical, like coding sessions, or it's more uh, like theoretical and presentation of uh, uh, architecture? Um. I realize the call is over and so people can drop if they need to. But Andre, I think that the answer to that is we, we typically decide that on site. My preference is that we have more hacking and less yakking. In other words, that there be specific proposals that people can come prepared to work on, you know, whether that's integrating, you know, sawtooth into fabric or something like that, or whether it's, you know, working on um, you know, uh, the crypto library like Hart was proposing and so forth, um, uh, or or even, you know, just sort of exploring and, and working on trying out uh, another group's, another project's technology um, to get better familiarity with it. And, uh, but again, depending on the nature of who ends up showing up will determine where the the session goes. If there's a lot of people that join that are sort of at the, 101 hyperledger phase then there would be a need for some some of that but uh one of the ideas that people have is that we um have the mornings for presentations and the afternoons for coding um and if we can i'd like to maybe try and stick to that so hopefully that helps oh i get it thank you and uh, then uh well if, if this is clear then uh what is the process of suggesting the topics and the like the approval of the topics? In the agenda for the meeting, there was a link to the agenda for the Hackfest, and it's a wiki, so anybody can add ideas to that. So you're welcome to do that. Oh. Uh, thanks. And uh, what is the deadline? Uh, the Hackfest. <laughs> ah, I see. OK. All okay. right, so I think we will add the topics then. Yes, thank you. Great. Thanks, Andre. Cheers, everybody. Bye-bye.